I remember when I lost my job. I heard that I was going to be laid off in a month's time. So many things went through my head. I was angry because I felt like I had given my best to the company. I had done my very best. Unfortunately, we just weren't a good fit. They wanted a personality that I didn't have. I had to come to accept that it wasn't about me. But in that moment, I was so angry and hurt and confused. I couldn't understand why God was letting me go through this. Why all of this was happening. I had done everything I was supposed to do. And I remember thinking, Lord, you knew my plans for the year. I committed these plans to you. How could you let this happen? Where do I start from now? And I heard a voice of God in my heart tell me, I'm working it all out for your good. You will see how I turn this into your favor. Don't worry. Just watch how things are going to fall in place. I have something else lined up for you. This needed to happen. I am going to use it for my glory. Friend, there will be some things in life that will throw you off balance. They will throw you off your course so completely as to question the goodness of God in your life. For me, it was only a job I lost. For you, it might be something else. But I've come to ask you today, can you believe that your Father in Heaven is so intentional about you that He will work out all things for your favor? Do you believe that God is really sovereign? That He has the power to bring out good from every situation that you find yourself in? No matter how dark or hopeless it may seem, the sovereignty of God, as we understand from Scripture, means that God created all things and that He knows all things and has unlimited power and is therefore in control of everything. That is what His sovereignty means. Nothing happens outside of God's knowledge and nothing happens outside of His permission. From Job, the 42nd chapter, the second verse, we hear, He says, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. In First Chronicles, the 29th chapter, the 11th to the 12th verse, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. You are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Even Jesus confirms this in Matthew, the 10th chapter, the 29th to 31st verse, when he says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from our Father? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. What does this mean for us? Does this mean that God is the cause of everything that happens to us, both good and bad? Or that it is God's will, plan, or desire for bad things to happen to us? Of course not. The Bible tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from God. In the book of James, the first chapter, the 17th verse. So, we also know that whatever is not good and perfect does not come from God. Our God is a good God whose plans for us are always of good and not of evil to bring us to an expected end. He has a vision of our future that is so good and beautiful and more than we could ever imagine that the Bible even tells us that our eyes has not seen nor our ears heard, nor has it entered into the mind of any man what God has in store for them that love him. That your God is sovereign does not mean unexpected or bad or tragic things will not happen to you. Jesus tells us in John, the 16th chapter, the 31st verse, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Instead, it means we can place our confidence in Him. 
that no matter what happens, he is sovereign enough to turn it around for our favor. Yes, the situation itself might not be favorable. It may even be our own doing. Sometimes we may even have used our free will to step out of God's will and make mistakes. But God is saying to you today, even then, he has the ability to work all things together for your favor. It might not make sense right now. It might not look like anything good right now. And that anything good can come out of that situation. But when Joseph was in prison, unfairly treated and accused, it must have taken him a lot to imagine how any of this could possibly be a good thing. When Anna couldn't have a child for years, it must have been difficult to imagine that it was a season of preparation for someone. When Jesus died and was still in the tomb before he resurrected, it must have been impossible for the disciples to see the hand of God working behind the scenes. But I have come to tell you today, brother and sisters, that no matter what has happened in your life today, God has the power and the ability to work all things for your good. The enemy might have meant it for bad, it may even have been your fault, but because you love God, the hand of God is upon your life, working all things for your favor. Something good is coming out of that job you lost. It may be a new and even greater opportunity and even better monies. Something good is coming out of that broken relationship. It may be a deeper relationship. Yes, even as difficult as it sounds, something good is coming out of losing that person. In your grief, it may be difficult to see how, but trust your God. He is in your corner. He's got your back. He's working all things for your good and your favor. Even the things that are not good in themselves. God is on your side. And if God is for you, nothing, no one, or even any situation can be against you. The Lord bless you.